Hi class, welcome back from your vacation and um, today we're going to continue with our lectures on electrodynamics and again I'd like to to mention our reference Introduction to Electrodynamics by David J. Griffiths and this book is highly recommended for you. So let's go about with our lecture today so let's start with surface charge and the force on a conductor so going back from equation 2.36 the continuity of the potential at the boundary is given by um, so let's go back to 2.36 very fast this one here this is equation 2 point uh, no this is equation 2.36 so if you have a uh, a surface charge the potential above would be different from the potential below and the derivative of the potential is um, the difference of the derivative in the potential above and below would be um, 1 over epsilon Sigma negative so that's the the boundary condition then we have discussed this um, a long time ago and i hope you have remembered this but i'm but anyway we'll go back to the to the section where we are going to do the discussion So anyway, um, you have that and because a conductor, as I've said, the surface of the conductor is where the charges would um, distribute itself. It will distribute uniformly on the surface of a conductor, no matter what shape of the conductor is. So, below the surface, the electric field of the conductor should be zero. We knew that. And above it should be non-zero. Because you already have um, a source of electric field by the charge um, enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So... For a conductor that has a surface charge density of sigma, um, it will have an electric field equivalent to this. So this is, by the way, um, v, uh, the partial of V um, below or above would re over N is minus v below over part with respect to n is equal to negative sigma over epsilon sub o <clears throat> so and and this is of course in the direction n um the direction n here is the direction that is normal to the surface let's check the figure uh, in the following slides so anyway this is just because your electric field below the conductor is zero and then you have an electric field above the surface where the charge is is located so 
you only have one term and this is um, the, the, the partial derivative of v above with respect to n the end there is the normal direction so let's go to let's proceed to the next slide so we can calculate the surface charge here if we know the potential and if we know also the electric field So if, if E and V are determined. So when you have an electric field, so when there is a presence of electric field and you put a charge there, the charge will experience a force that is equal to um, F equal to Q times electric field right if you have a charge but in this case um if you have um an electric field the surface charge this is not anymore a point charge the surface charge will experience a force per unit area and the force per unit area is equal to force per unit area is equal to q over area times e and this one is just equal to sigma that is just equal to sigma that's why you have um force per unit area which is this equation so let's clear this out so um there is a problem here since the electric field at the surface charge is discontinuous why is it discontinuous because when you have a charge <coughs> the electric field below the charge would be different from the electric field above the charge let's look at this figure and let's um, do the uh, let's let's um, examine this figure so you have here <coughs> um, a patch of um, of a conductor you have um, a charge distribution here Sigma and this Sigma makes the or is responsible responsible for the discontinuity of the electric field so like for example in a conductor so when you have a conducting surface uh, or a, uh, a conductor a solid conductor here the electric field inside for example is zero and since there are charges here on the surface the electric field outside would be non-zero so that's uh, because of the surface charge density there is discontinuity of the electric field so anyway let's go back here so the the electric field the electric force per unit area would be equal to um, this one but since there is discontinuity what would be the electric field that's that's going to be used as the electric field to be multiplied to the patch of area where the sigma is located or is distributed or this the distribution of charge is located so in this case we're going to use the average of the electric field of the electric field above and the electric field below so that's uh, that's the the logical electric field to be used so here you have may just read this one 
There is a problem here for the electric field is discontinuous at the charge at the surface charge. So which value is supposed to be used? E above, E below, or something in between? The answer is the average of the two should be used. Let's find out the reason. So, again, here, let's um, focus on a small patch. We studied before that when you have um, a patch of area, a patch of area with a sigma, there is an electric field that's going to, to be projected above, which is sigma over 2 epsilon. And then below would be negative sigma over 2 epsilon. Um, by the way, the, the, if, if, you have, if you have a direction there, that's, that's the opposite direction here. So this is negative when you have the direction. But the magnitude is, is always... Um, the magnitude is just the same. The direction is opposite, but the magnitude is the same. So, when you have an external field or a field that's passing by the surface, we call that E other. We call this one E other. So, we're going to find out what's E other. Now, So the total field consists of two parts. Um, the first field would be because of the patch and the other would be because of the E other, which is present around the space where the patch is located. So here's the trick here. The patch cannot exert a force to itself or it is like a person that cannot lift um, you cannot you cannot actually lift your body by um, standing in a basket you can try it yourself you can stand on a basket and try lifting yourself you cannot lift it so The force on the patch, uh, then, the force on the patch is then exclusively because of E other. Because the, the E other there will not be discontinuous. It's a continuous field there. What makes it continuous is this one here. So, you have E other also here, but look at this one. Here would be the electric field E other plus this one on this side. So, um, so if you have that, the electric field would be, the total electric field would be this one. And for here, the E other is in this direction. And then your electric field will be in this direction. So your, your field would be in that direction. So if you compare this and compare this electric field here, the direction, the direction of this one and the direction of that one are different. So there is this continuity in the, in the electric field because of the the charge that's present in the surface so let's find out what that is <clears throat> so now we have e above would be again as i've told you just a while ago it's e other plus sigma 
over 2 epsilon sub o in the n direction and the one below is minus sigma over 2 is e other minus sigma over 2 epsilon n so e other would be e other would be the average of e above plus e below so that's one half e above plus uh, electric field below that's the average and that's just the e other so what is the average then so you have e above plus um e below so this is um when you add this one when you add e above and e below this is 2e other um this is now equal to the average so when So when the when the when you draw this patch here when you make this circle very small here what happens the patch of area becomes very small and e other there would be um would just be equal to 0 so that um so that you will you will have the average to be equal to so that you will have the average to be equal to sigma over epsilon sub o plus sigma over epsilon sub o times one half so that your your e average would be one sigma over two epsilon sub o and and um since you have f equals this one and this one is just sigma over 2 epsilon so what you will have as the as the average force per unit area is is just equal to this so this is actually equal to uh, sigma e average but your e average is equal to this one so you have 1 over 2 epsilon sub o square a uh, sigma square so by the way this is um putting the patch um considering a very small patch here so that e other would be zero if if the patch if the patch is small e other would go to zero because no electric field would come out if uh, if the patch is too small so the average would be the average would be this one and so your force per unit area will be this one this amounts to an outward electrostatic pressure on the surface force per unit area is a pressure and it will draw the conductor into the field it means that it will um the the patch will experience a pressure because of the electric field present so we can uh, write it as uh, pressure to be equal to 
epsilon over 2 times electric field. So anyway, this is um, from F equal to, um, this is 1 over 2 sigma square over so when you when you put an epsilon here when you square this epsilon you have to multiply an epsilon here so you will have this one is the electric field from the surface that, that the surface experiences outside or above the surface charge distribution so your p would be so this is now equal to p so would look like this this is now uh, this is your e square so that's the pressure there so you can so a patch or a charge distribution on a on a surface will experience a pressure from electric field um, that's electric field that's um, that surrounds that surface so that's just the meaning of it so you can also um, you can solve this problem if you have time and and um, you may discover something so you can solve those things then we will proceed with the next one about capacitors we will do capacitors so I, I think that you know already about capacitors capacitors are just two metals um, supposedly put near each other and one of the metals will have uh, or one of the conductors will have um, charge positive Q and the other would be negative Q um, this one is the figure for a capacitor you have here um, this one and this one as the other as the other conductor they have to be uh, charged in such a way that one of the metal one of the metal in the capacitor is oppositely charged as the other with the same magnitude so in this case if you have um, if you measure the electric field if you if you or the electric potential I mean you have to connect um, the voltmeter here and here so there will be a potential difference and what is that potential difference this is the potential difference between the two um, metals or the me two conductors. So V is a constant over a conductor, right? We, we knew that before. And uh, the potential difference between, yeah, these are equipotential here these are um if you choose any point here the potential would be the same as any point here and if you choose any point here the potential would also be the same but the two would have if you if you get the potential difference they would have a difference because why in the first place they have different charges and so they they would have different potential so there would be potential difference and this one is due to the potential due to the positive charge and the minus because it's potential difference this is the potential due to the um, 
negative charge. And this is just equal to um, electric field electric the integral of electric field with respect to oh with adapted to dl so so there's a a statement here how does the charge distribute itself over two conductors is not known and calculating the field would be a mess if their shapes are complicated but how about if e is known so if e is known it would be easy to calculate the potential difference but if not it would be a little messier <coughs> So, anyway, we knew that the electric field is by Coulomb's law is given by this. So, um, in this case, if, if you have a charge, um, if you have a charge nearby that's giving the electric field, if you double the charge, then the electric field will also be doubled since the charge is proportional to the electric field so the bigger the charge the greater the electric field or the smaller the charge the smaller the electric field and this is also true with the potential so if you have a bigger charge then you have a large potential or if you have a smaller charge then you also have a low potential we define a, um, a proportionality constant to that um, we call that the capacitance and this is um, defined by this equation here C is equal to Q over V so the capacitance is a constant because when you increase the charge Q the potential will also increase and when you decrease it the potential the the potential will also decrease proportionally and then you have a you have a, a constant and we call that constant the capacitance the capacitance is measured in parents and parents is just equal to one coulomb per volt one coulomb per volt and one part is actually a very large capacitance so in some experiments that you will ex that you have experienced um capacitance are the usual capacitance that you use in electronics are in the order of microfarad or picofarad um by the way microfarad is 10 to the 6 sorry for this one this is 10 to the negative 6 and this one is picofarad which is 10 to the negative 12. So, by the way, capacitance is a geometrical quantity. This is determined by sizes, shapes, and separation between two conductors. So, if you have a separation of a very small separation, what do you think is the capacitance? The capacitance would be very large if the separation is very small. And if you have... Um, <clears throat> a big capacitor or be very big conductors you, your capacitance is also very large so let's look at let's look at an example in the in the slides so the potential is the pass is the potential of the positive conductor less than the negative one so that's given here this one here and
um, where is that? Yeah, here you have. So we've done that. So capacitant is an intrinsically positive quantity. It's always positive quantity. You measure it, the the Q. You you don't mind the you don't mind the sign of Q. So it's always Q is always just the magnitude of Q, and V would just be the positive potential minus the negative potential, and that's and that's it. You get a positive um, get a positive capacitance. So let's take an example to find a capacitance. So here you have find the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, which I think you know already, consisting of two metal surface two metal surfaces of area A held a distance D apart. So if you place um, a positive Q here, say for example positive Q and then negative Q here so the charges since you have a metal surface the charges q will of course distribute uniformly on the surface whether they are positive or negative they distribute distribute uniformly on a conducting surface so you will have a sigma here which is q over a and then you have a negative sigma here below so let's uh, consider that the area is very large so that it so that the electric field what is the electric field here you have sigma as a charge distribution so your electric field would be what it's it's going to be going downward right we have solved the electric field of two plates before one has um, a negative charge and a positive charge and the field outside would be zero and the field here would be zero the only field that remains would be between the two plates right so what is the electric field between the the two fields here We have solved that before and um, let's just anyway let's um, so the electric field inside because they add up the electric field was supposedly um, for if you have a single metal plate or a single sheet of charge distribution, the electric field would be epsilon, I mean sigma over 2 epsilon. But since here in the middle they add up, uh, so you have epsilon, uh, sigma over, um, sigma over 2 epsilon plus sigma over 2 epsilon this would just be sigma over epsilon so that is the electric field there inside and so this is the electric field so what is the the potential difference between what is the potential difference here so the potential difference would be v equal to integral e dot dl and the dl here would be uh, y going to positive y so or negative y i mean so v would just be equal to negative electric field is sigma over epsilon sub o and the electric field and the the electric field and the dy this is actually equal to this is negative dy so you have um dy the negative here and the negative here will cancel so you will have a positive 
sigma e um, so this is now dy so you will have sigma over epsilon sub o integral of dy and dy would just be d the integral of that would just be d so you will have um, sigma so v is equal to sigma over epsilon but uh, times d so but sigma is equal to q over a this is sigma so you can get the capacitance which is um, defined as q over v here you have um, this is um, this is q over v so you will have a capacitance of e of a times epsilon sub o times d this one here so let's clear this up so that it would not be messy uh -huh. so you will have a capacitance equal to this so if you have a plates that that are square with sides one centimeter and they are held one millimeter apart then the capacitance would be equal to this one 9 times 10 to the negative 13 farad so that's how you compute capacitance so as i've said when when d is very small the capacitance would be large and if area is very large the capacitance would be large also so if your area is small then the capacitance would be small and if you separate it um, in a large distance the capacitance would be um, also sm be small because it cannot hold much energy when you when you separate them um, apart on a larger distance so let's now look at example 2.11 find the capacitance of two concentric spherical metal shells with radius or radii a and b so here you have a concentric metal plates um, sphere sphere so there's no figure so anyway you have a um, a sphere these are if you look at it it's like a um a sphere with a cavity inside which is also a sphere and this one has um this this one has a larger radius b and the other um and the other one is having a radius a so this is the the plate the outside is positive q and the inside is negative q so let's compute the the um, capacitance but first we have to know the electric field we know that this is the form of the electric field so the potential difference between them is just equal to v this is the integral of e dot dl so if you have a um, sphere if you have or if you have a positive q here and a negative q here the the field will just go in this direction there will be no field the electric field will be zero here and also outside be zero why because if you draw a gaussian surface here inside there will be no charge enclosed and if you go if you draw a gaussian surface here outside the total charge enclosed would be equal to zero so there is no electric field so in in that case 
um, the electric field here is zero and the electric field here is also zero. The electric field is not zero here. So there's an electric field on this region. So there's an electric field there. Just like what happened here. Just like what happened here. They store the energy here. Actually, capacitors store electric field. They also store the charge. They also store energy. So, um, we compute the potential. Let's uh, clean this up. So, here you have V equal to negative integral from uh, B to A. Um, you have electric field um, B to A because this is negative. But if you, if you choose positive, it would just be A to B. Okay. So... So that's it and um, electric field is in this form so here you have um, this one is a constant this is a constant only R is not constant so it is um, inside the integral and so you will have the integ the, the integral of 1 over R square is just negative 1 over R negative 1 over r so that the r negative 1 the negative here will cancel with the negative there and so you will have the potential equal to this one so what is now <clears throat> so by the way the v is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon sub o times b minus a over a b so c is equal to q over v and so your capacitance would have this form so that's how you compute the capacitance so, to charge up a capacitor is to remove the electrons from the positive plate and carry them to the negative plate. So, that's how you charge up. So, initially, if you have a capacitor here, um, if th this is supposed to be neutral, so you remove an electron and put the electron here so this one becomes positive and this one becomes negative so and you do that you do that and so on and so forth you will concentrate a positive on this side and you will concentrate a negative charge on that side so you will now have a Q here negative and you have a positive Q here that's how you charge a capacitor initially the the capacitor would have neutral charge when they are not connected with electricity the capacitor would have zero charge but when you connect with electricity the capacitor will charge itself here and so it will it will have a q and then when you when you concentrate a charge here the positive charge and the negative charge will go to the other side you will create a potential difference between the two plates that's why you will have a capacitance equal to q over v so how much how much work does it take then to charge the capacitor up to a final amount q so let's um, do that let's do this 
so anyway let's um so work what is uh, work work is equal to force times times distance or force that distance or if you have work then this is a differential work f times um, d or let's um, let's uh, do it like this mm. anyway, uh, so work would be d work would be f dot dx for example and um, here you will have what is or we will say that this is dl so d work would be equal to q times e dot dl here um sorry you have to put an arrow and this one is what edl dl is equal to um dv right So you will have um, D work would be um, so your D work would be equal to Q times uh, this is DV but you're not actually doing DV so anyway let's uh, check uh, DV is what DV is you have V is equal to Q over um, C, right? So if you transfer charges, little charges from, from one conductor to another, you will create a small potential so if you transfer dq from this side to this side you transfer dq here you'll create a potential dv here so you will have dv equal to dq over c so your dv so your dv will be so your DW, D work is equal to um, Q over C times DQ, which is this one. Because your DV is equal to this. So let's clean this up. So if you now get the work you just integrate this and get the work so integrate integrate this one and of course integrate that one and then when you integrate that you will have work and of course you integrate this with respect to dq so you start from zero charge to a full charge capacitor Q with charge Q then you will have this one the work so the work will just be equal to Q squared over C over 2 but what is what is um, Q over C that's uh, V is equal to Q over C right so this is also so you, we can also write work as equal to um, um, 
v over 2 of, of sorry vq over 2 and we can also write the work in this form or in this form so that's how you compute the work So that's for the capacitor that's how you get the work when you charge a capacitor because the capacitor initially has zero charge and then when you connect it to the elect elect I mean electricity it will charge itself actually the capacitor will protect our appliance from being electrically shocked so anyway the V here is the potential between the two metal plates and the capacitance would just be the constant capacitance so that's for the capacitor and so you can solve these problems when you have free time I hope you understood something about um, the lecture. So you can solve these problems also. This one here. And So there's a lot of problem here you can solve but anyway you don't have to solve this you just read it and then understand how you can solve it so in the next lecture we will um, in the next lecture we will go to chapter 3 so just get uh, ready so I hope you understand something and um, that ends our lecture that is the last segment of that chapter in the next lecture we will be um, doing another chapter so that's all for now hope to see you I uh, hope to uh, give the lecture maybe in next week so that you will have more time to to study with your other lessons take care um see you next time